Well, this week we're going to actually go over our trap preparation and getting things ready to actually go out in the field. Uh, this is a very important part of being a good trapper and, and having good sound equipment. Actually, the back of my truck, I just took a trip. I was on the road for a month trapping and filming, and this is what my truck looks like uh, when I get home. But what I'm going to do with these traps right here and show you is exactly what you need to do with the traps when you first get them. And I'm also going to show the boiling process. Now, when it comes to cleaning traps, there's a lot of different people out there with a lot of different methods. All I do is I use our logwood dye. Uh, the Cold Creek logwood dye, I boil the traps. Uh, if you have brand new traps, you want to probably let them sit outside, maybe spray them down with some water, let them get some rust, and, and then that dye will adhere to it a lot better. But you really don't even need to do that. If you boil your traps in the logwood dye, you're going to get the oils and the scents off of them. These are all traps that I've set in the ground and I've pulled since I was on the road here over the last month. This is the Duke 550. Uh, we got our one and a half double jaws, the Duke one and a half double jaw that we've used. And we have our Duke dog proofs that we've used. Now all of these, the Duke dog proofs is gonna have, uh, a lot of them have catches, so I wanna get that off of it. But they're also gonna have a lot of that magnet uh, trailing scent and some remnants of coon buster that we use down in there and we want to get them all cleaned off so when we go out in the field we have a, a clean trap to use um, with the duke dog proof i want to say this if you do get the dog proofs you do not have to boil these when you first get them i don't you don't even have to take the tag off the tag actually can work for you as uh some eye appeal to uh go out there and have the coots find your traps or whatever but you do not need to boil these when you first get these duke dog proofs human scent does not bother skunks possums or raccoons and you could set these in the ground once you have them in the ground and you put bait in them and you catch some critters in them then you want to come home and keep them clean when you're putting them up for the winter or if you're going to be using them again you can boil them but a brand new dog proof you do not have to boil these are good right out of the box with the other ones, the one half double jaw, the 550, the 650, any trap that you're going to use them for canines uh, or water sets, you want to boil those, get uh, them ready to be working. The dog proofs a whole different animal, but we got all three different ones we've used. When it comes to doing my trap prep, I'm always doing trap prep before and after they're in the ground. Some of these have had animals in them. Some of them might have, uh, you know, lost some pan tension or something of that nature. So with every trap that I take from new or used in the field, I'm going to set it, make sure that it sets properly. Night latch is good, it's level and the pan tension is pretty good. So that one's good to go. We still have our S hook on there. I'm gonna show you that process in this, but that trap's good to go. Now I'll do that same process for every trap that uh, I brought home. This one here, obviously there's mud. That boiling process is gonna clean that off, but I'm gonna set this trap And we're going to check that, that's good. There's actually hair on this one. That's skunk hair. This one actually had a skunk, so we're gonna clean that up. But pan tension's good on that. I'm gonna do that for each one of those. Now, on the one and a half double jaw, I'm gonna do the same thing. These have all been in the ground. And the one and a half double jaws, these 550s, I don't usually have to make many corrections on those, pretty much out of the box. Once you clean them up, that night latch pans level. Uh, check your pan tension. It can fluctuate a pound or two. And you you know, there's things on the market, pan tension, uh, things where you push down, it'll actually show you the pan tension. You can get those. Uh, I can usually tell by feel where I want it. Um, but the one and a half double jaw, this trap right here, if you catch an animal and they, they work the trap a little bit, 
uh, they can sometimes bend uh, the trigger and things of that nature. But this one's set pretty flat, and the pan tension's pretty good on that. Now, I had a little mud in it, so I'm going to set it one more time and just see where that is. We're good. That one's good to go. But sometimes on these one and a half double jaws, when we have them, like I said, in the ground or in the water, uh, they're gonna have some things that maybe need to be corrected. That one's good too. I'm gonna show you that process, how to increase and decrease your pan tension and get your pan level on that in this as well. The Duke Dog Proof, pretty much, you can see this one's greased up, got a little mud on it. I'm just really basically seeing if the trigger stays in there, that's good to go. That's gonna go on. I'm gonna do that process on all three versions of these traps, whether it's the dog proof, the one and a half double jaw, or the 550, that's the process I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that for every trap that I have in here. We're just gonna set it as I said. We're gonna check and make sure that pan's level and without being redundant, Oh, had a little dirt in there. See, that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that it was just dirt and it wasn't that the thing needs filed. So we'll set that again. Click. That was just a little bit of dirt that was up under there from being in the ground. Pan's level, flat, ready to go. And the pan tension is right where I want it. Going to do that with every trap. We're going to get into some little nuances as I work through here and go start to finish on uh, what you can do to work your pan tension on those one and a halfs and talk about it on the 550. We're going to start with uh, getting into it a little more with the Duke one and a half double jaw. This is the Duke one and a half double jaw right here. Uh, really good traps. Got that double jaw underneath. As you can see, it's welded there. That's going to be something that if you catch an animal on this, they're going to be there the next morning. When you're adjusting these traps, you need two tools. You need a pair of pliers and you need a screwdriver as you can see on this there's a little screw right here on the pan that attaches it to the trap we may be loosening or tightening that that's going to increase or decrease the pan tension and you need the pliers to possibly get in here and work the base of the trap to actually move the trigger or uh, the latch in and out to uh, kind of level the pan off so let's see where this one's at uh, right now so we set it and this one I don't like that because I don't even think that's going to go off that's not even going to go off so we're going to actually have to move that uh, latch out and in order to do that we're going to take these pliers and you're just grabbing on the base right here so you have it just like that right there on the base. And then all you're doing is pulling away from the trap just a little bit. Do it a little bit at a time. We're just looking to level the pan out and be able to get the trigger on there. So we set the trap. There we go. I think we got it. So now that pan's level. And let's see if it goes off correctly. There. That's exactly where we want the pan. So that's the process if you, your pan's too high. Let me show you what that would look like. If the pan's too high, which what I mean is when you get this set, in order to set it, I got to have the pan up like that. You see how that pan sticks up? We don't want that. We want that pan level with the trap so when the animal comes in that's not sticking out of the water or causing any issues so that pans way too high on that trap now the same way that i fixed it before we're going to fix it by going the opposite we want to pull this uh base in a little bit to try and level that up now my hands are still strong uh, but if your hands aren't strong enough to do that, you can just put that in a vise and, and pull it that way. So we did that with that. And that should it went a little too far, and I know it by just doing this so many times. Uh, I went a little too far, so we're just going to 
take that out just a hair and we're going to set this trap and this should be a level pan now again there it is that's a pretty level pan right there that's how you're going to level your pan if it's too high you're just pulling the base this base right here back in towards the trap a little bit and do it a hair at a time and you don't have to move it much and it'll make a big difference but that's exactly what we're looking for when it comes to uh, getting that set up now pan tension i like my pan tension when i pull up on the trap pan you'll see it fall by itself it actually falls on its own weight okay that's what i'm looking for now a lot of these traps when they come out of the box are going to have a pan that won't fall by itself you see now that pan will not fall by itself i have to put pressure on it so i don't want that i want that pan to fall by itself so all you're doing is just taking your screwdriver on that nut right there and you're giving it maybe a quarter turn each time and i gave that about a quarter to a half a turn and now that pan falls by itself and that's exactly what i want this trap i'm going to set it one more time to check but this trap is going to be ready to be put in the ground now or on the water and that is now set we got a level pan we can put that in the water make a set and that is now a working trap Once you get the 550 set, like I said, pan tension, I'm going to want it normally in the three pound range. And once I get this uh, night latch click, that's pretty, pretty nice to have that click and know that that pan's level now and ready to go in the field. But when I'm feeling this, I'm actually in my own mind imagining a coyote stepping on that or even a fox or a bobcat. And if you, you know, you put that in your mind and you can imagine them stepping on it. And that's right where I want the pan tension. Now, if you do need to change the pan tension on these, you can do it with the dog. And we have shown that before, but you're just going to put the dog in a vise. And to increase the pan tension, you're going to go away from the trap. And to decrease the pan tension, you're going to just tap. And all you want to do is to uh, bend that rod dog just a little bit at a time and that's going to increase and decrease your pan tension this is an absolute beast of a canine trap i know a lot of guys out west uh and people that uh, are starting out think that you need to go bigger bigger is better duke makes a really nice 650 which is a bigger trap i don't feel i need it i trap in a lot of different states the 650 is not legal in a lot of those states about half so all my needs can be covered by this 550 and i'm bedding that trap properly and it's going in the ground uh with very very minimal uh prep work on it and it's catching coyotes everywhere across the country caught coyotes in eight different uh, states last year and i'm really really happy with that but when it comes to pan tension the rod dog in or out is going to increase or decrease your pay attention to where you want it and that's really all there is to that when it comes to the dog proof as i said earlier these are pretty much right out of the box ready to go but as, it, as far as trap prep goes to get these ready to go in the ground that's all i do i check to make sure that the pans level that they fire correctly and that the pan tension's in the ballpark of where I need it. And, and if you do that, it doesn't take long to do that minimal amount. These traps are going to work for you, most everybody out there. Now, if you're a long liner, you're on a three-day check out west, you may want to beef them up, things of that nature. But most of everybody watching this clip, that's all you need to do for trap prep. And we will boil these uh, once we... Uh, get the fire uh, boil in the water and get our logwood dye in there but we'll boil these and they will be clean fresh ready to go before we boil these we're going to actually make sure they have a steak on them and uh, all of our kits that we offer at north american trapper i get some questions sometimes people get them and they they don't uh understand uh 
how to put the stakes on and use the stakes. And this is the process that is used. There's really not that much to it. You're just taking an S hook and the S hook is uh, gonna be used to attach our ground talon stake to the end of the swivel. And I'm gonna show you how to do it with uh, cable extension as well. But all you're doing is you're taking your S hook and you're putting it through the loop here on the end swivel. And you're gonna clamp that down. You can do that with pliers. I do have a S hook tool uh, that we use. Um, so we have that connected to the end of the trap now. And you can see that S hook is connected to the end of the trap. Then you're just taking the loop from the stake, putting that through the other end of the S hook and clamping that down. And that is as simple as it gets. Now that's connected to the trap. The stake is connected to the trap. And stake driver that we use right there. And you're basically driving the stake down in the ground to about where the swivel is. And that's in the ground. It's going to hold the animal in the ground just like that. These are nice. They got three swivels. End swivel, mid swivel, and base swivel here that rotates around. But that's how easy it is to put uh, the talons or whatever staking system that you're using on there. Now, another system that we use uh, when we've set these DPs and other ones, depending on if we want to stake the trap or not, is a cable extension. Now, this cable extension can be used in a lot of different scenarios. It can be used around a tree, a uh, cinder block, anything of that nature. Basically, you wrap it around the tree, wrap it around the cinder block or whatever. Once you get it around, you put that loop through and you're gonna have that held on to whatever you fastened it to. And then all you have to do is take the S hook and the end of that S hook that's a trap to the end of the chain is now on there. That's around the tree or whatever and that's going to hold the animal as well. So that's the two staking methods uh, for the DPs. That's the staking methods that we use on most all of our sets dealing with the one half double jaw and also the staking system that we're going to use on the 550s for the canines. Just taking the S hook through the end swivel, putting that through, clamp it down, and then clamp it through the loop on either the cable extension or the stake and once you do that you're going to be set ready to go pound these in the ground and you're going to have these traps stake for animals uh, and they're going to be there when you go back to check the next morning well we're at the final step of our trap preparation before we put everything in the ground and this is our logwood die that's just starting to get to where it's going to start rolling and that's when it's at a full boil we're gonna dip the traps in. I'm gonna leave them in there. I'm gonna boil them for probably about 45 minutes to an hour. And then once that hour's up, we just take them out. I take them in the shed, I hang them up or just set them on the floor. And they are now gonna be clean, ready to go. We've done our fixing of the pan tension. We've got our stakes and our S hooks all clamped down. They're ready to be staked in the ground. We're gonna just do that last process, clean them up. And really, as you've seen here, it's not that hard. It's, it's really a process that, you know, it is time consuming. It's been about three, four hours uh, for the process to be completed for what I have here, about six or eight dozen traps. But it's uh, something that definitely needs to be done. And it's something that uh, will help you be more successful out there whether uh, you're chasing canines or even animals like coons and things that don't smell, your traps are gonna fire better. You're gonna have better working equipment, which is gonna basically create more results for you when it comes time to uh, be catching critters. So all I do is just take these and we dip them right in the water. And we just continue to do that. These are our Duke 550s, putting them down there, get them all submerged. They're in the water and we'll put one more uh, thing in there, which is about another 
probably 15 or 16 and that's about all the room that we have now with that as I said we're gonna let them boil for about an hour and then we're gonna take them out hang them up and they are ready to go and that is really the whole process for trap prep and getting your traps uh, ready to go out there in the field and start catching some critters well it's time to take them out uh, they've been in here boiling for about an hour and actually I think I put this one in last so I'm gonna pull that out first it'll be probably some steam coming off but you can see after the steam dissipates how they're all colored up now they're all black they're all clean everything is boiled off there's no dirt and these traps are now ready to go in the ground and that is the final process of the trap prep and i can't wait to get some of them in the ground so we showed you the methods the techniques that we do it's not a lot just uh, tune your traps a little bit make sure they fire correctly clean them up put your staking system on them and uh they're black as coal and ready to go we wish you the best out there